In this week's news, the death knell for community TV in Australia. Prayers of thanks as Fijian hostages are released. And Christian aid agencies helping after devastating floods in South Asia. This is In Focus Christian News and Current Affairs. Hi, welcome to the program. It's great to have your company. I'm Danielle Sinnott and my co-host, of course, is Kent Kingston. I don't know how we do it, Danielle, but once again, we have an awesome program lined up for you today. It's a miracle for Kent, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for instance, have you noticed the number of people who've been coming down with a particularly nasty flu lately? I have, Kent, and I bet you're going to tell me that Doc writes in to tell us how to avoid it. Yes, he certainly Very is. Good. And we've also got Politics in Focus with Lyle Shelton. And I'm looking forward to chatting with Dr. Richard Ilofa. He was raised in a Jewish family in Morocco, but he now accepts Jesus as his Messiah and has focused his life on sharing the good news with other Jews. Yeah, which is fantastic. But of course, the news isn't so good for our viewers on Digital 44 in Adelaide. It's one of a number of community TV broadcasters whose days are numbered, unfortunately. Mm. An announcement by the Australian government that community television broadcasts will cease at the end of next year has been greeted with dismay. Christian media ministries, including Record in Focus, are among the organisations affected. Community television is often the only way Christian groups can reach a free-to-air audience. According to the ABC, Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull said the broadcast spectrum currently used by community TV will be unavailable at the end of 2015. The spectrum will be repurposed or sold off to commercial TV interests. New research suggests that giving kids a sip of dad's beer now and then may put them at risk of developing a heavy drinking problem later in life. According to the ABC, the research contradicts the common belief that parents can teach responsible drinking by allowing young people access to alcohol under supervised conditions. Instead, the University of New South Wales study found that in families where parents had allowed access to alcohol, teenagers were three times more likely to become heavy drinkers. Talk about responsible drinking, we ought to be talking about responsible parenting. Teenagers often like to push the boundaries and if you're already giving them alcohol, I think what we're seeing is teenagers pushing the boundaries on how much alcohol they drink. Last Sunday was declared a day of thanksgiving for churches across Fiji. 45 Fijian hostages who had been serving as United Nations peacekeepers were released by Islamist militants from war-torn Syria. The Fijian soldiers were patrolling Israel's contested Golan Heights border region when they were captured by the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Nusra Front. The Fijian Methodist Church says the whole nation was praying for the release of the peacekeepers during the two weeks of their captivity. According to RTE News, Fijian officials were assisted by the government of Qatar in negotiating the peacekeepers' release. In an historic meeting, the heads of both Catholic and Orthodox churches from the Middle East have shared their concerns for their region with US President Barack Obama. The church leaders were in Washington for the inaugural Defence of Christians Summit. During the event, a statement from the president was received which highlighted the need to protect Christian communities and other religious minorities throughout the Middle East. The Defence of Christians Summit hit the news, however, when Republican Senator Ted Cruz made strong statements in support of Israel during his speech, but left the stage after being heckled by audience members with equally strong opposing views. Parts of India, Pakistan and Nepal have been devastated by monsoonal floods that have killed nearly 500 people and left more than a million displaced. Particularly hard hit is the city of Srinagar in Indian-held Kashmir, where people spent days stranded on rooftops waiting for the floods to recede. Christian NGOs are working together with government and other agencies to organise a response. In Nepal, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, is providing emergency medical assistance after one region had all four of its medical facilities destroyed by floodwaters. 
Flood survivors are vulnerable to water and vector-borne diseases, particularly women, children, elderly and also pregnant mothers. People wanting to support our work in Nepal and other ongoing disasters around the world can donate to our Disaster Response and Preparedness Fund. ADRA is also active in West Africa as local authorities struggle to contain the Ebola epidemic, which has now killed more than 2,100 people across five countries. ADRA is supporting the Cooper Adventist Hospital in Liberia, a country where in just the space of one week, 300 new Ebola cases were reported. Working together with international and church-based partners, ADRA is providing more than $160,000 worth of medical supplies to both Cooper Adventist Hospital and Waterloo Adventist Hospital in Freetown, Sierra Leone. ADRA is also helping with psychological counselling for survivors and is providing community information on how to prevent the virus spreading. Time is running out for farmers in the south of Israel who say they want to plant 100,000 fruit trees before the Jewish New Year, the 24th of September. The New Year, or Rosh Hashanah, will mark the beginning of the Sabbath year when observant Jewish farmers will follow the biblical command to refrain from working their land. The planting program faced disruption as rocket fire was exchanged between Hamas militants and the Israeli military. But now, as the bombing has all but ended, efforts have redoubled, with some trees even being planted in holes left by rocket explosions. Earlier this year, New Zealand Christians were told that after 20 years of music and celebration, the annual Parachute Festival would no longer continue. But now, thanks to the efforts of fans who couldn't bear to let the dream die, a new festival is being launched. Festival One will be held at the same Mystery Creek location on the same anniversary weekend in late January 2015. If all goes according to plan, high-profile overseas acts Switchfoot, New World Sun and Gungor will headline the festival. Parachute Music has given the event its endorsement. Cancer is a serious issue, but it seems that increasingly people are having a lot of fun raising awareness and funds for research into effective treatments. Sydney Adventist Hospital staff got involved and with the help of Warunga Adventist School students, shot this video entry for the Pink Glove Dance a national competition focused on raising awareness of breast cancer. The hospital wants online votes for its video so it can win $10,000 for the Breast Cancer Network Australia. That's the news for this week. What a fun video, Kent. That would have been great to make. Yeah, I was actually there for the shooting of that, you know, that last scene when the yeah. camera pulls out and the, you know, you can see the, the crowd there. The yeah, yeah, it was that was a really good spirit. That was it was a lot of fun. Hey, stick with us. We'll be straight back with Politics in Focus. For more than 40 years, Grammy-nominated artist and pastor Wintley Phipps has used his voice and music ministry to inspire people from all walks of life. Wintley has been a regular guest with Bill and Gloria Gaither and the Billy Graham Crusades, and he has sung for every US president since Jimmy Carter. After 19 years, he returns to Australia for two very special performances in Melbourne and Sydney, joined by songbirds Anna Weatherup, Emily Rex and Marlita Fong. Bookings are essential and seating limited, so go to saltermusic.com. That's Salter with a P to reserve your tickets today. Planning your future can be a daunting task. What you want to do, who you want to be, and the road ahead can often be unpredictable. No one really knows what the future holds. Avondale, it's education designed for life. Hi, welcome back and welcome to, uh, to Lyle Shelton, who's uh, just fresh from lurking about the uh, corridors of power in Canberra. How are you, Lyle? 
I'm well, thanks, Ken. I'm not sure if lurking's the right word, but we do wear out a bit of shoe leather there, there <laughs> from time to time. Okay, now on, on to a, a very serious topic, Lyle. It looks very much like uh, we're, we're going to see military involvement, um, Australian military personnel in Iraq again. Um, but for once, we don't seem to hear church groups you know, calling for, for peace and, and a diplomatic solution. What's going on there? Well, uh, you, you probably have to ask the churches that, uh, Kent, uh, I guess we, everyone's been really appalled by the just extreme brutality that we've seen from the Islamic State and, and our, our Muslim friends, to their credit, don't like them being referred to as Islamic because they sure. see this as uh, very far from their religion. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, the brutality has been uh, pretty horrible. And uh, I think uh, even churches uh, would agree, and, and it's not for me to speak on their behalf, but uh, I think uh, they would even agree that um, something needs to be done to contain this menace. It is a real threat to humanity and, uh, and uh, it can't be allowed to continue to grow in that part of the world. It's a, it's a bit of a worry, Lyle, because of course you know, every other time you know, Australia or the US has gone in to you know, fight against guerrilla fighters on their home turf, it, it, it never ends up pretty. No, it, it doesn't, and um, th there's no easy way to do this sort of thing. But uh, what we are seeing here, as the Prime Minister and others have said, is pure evil. Uh, we see more beheadings. Uh, we see this group with uh, expansionist goals. They, they're not uh, just uh, content to stay in one place. They want to continue to expand in the Middle East and throughout the world. And so it does need to be con contained and defeated uh, for the safety of humanity. Okay. Well, one thing that I guess, you know, a, a lot of church groups and the government seem to be having more difficulty uh, agreeing on is, you know, what to do with the fallout, you know, what to do with the, the refugees that are, are streaming out of uh, countries, you know, like Syria, like Iraq, that, that are in, in conflict. Um, do we see any, any way forward here? Well, what we've seen is a humanitarian disaster, of course, first in Syria and uh, now in Iraq, where hundreds of thousands. Uh, and if you take the two zones, uh, well over a million people have been displaced uh, from their homes. And uh, this, of course, places enormous uh, pressure on uh, countries like Australia uh, and, and other countries of goodwill which are prepared to accept uh, refugees. Uh, it was disappointing to see uh, the Minister for Immigration, Scott Morrison, last week say that the, the reason we can't double our humanitarian intake in response to these crises is because it would cost too much money in the forward estimates, $2 billion. But uh, mm. I think that given that they've stopped uh, people smuggling essentially, there's some big savings to be made in, in closing down detention centres and this could be applied to resettling refugees. So I really don't think the cost factor is an issue. I think we've got to look at the humanitarian and the compassionate side. Yeah, interesting insight. Okay, thanks for your time this week, Lyle. Pleasure, Kent. Thanks for having us. And now it's over to Danielle and the Doc. Good to see you, Doc. Yes, hello, Danielle, and hello to all my friends out there. It's really great being with you. They I are? think there are five and a half million, I think, today. Five and a half or was million. That last week. <laughs> oh, look, sounds like a good figure to me, and I'm sure there are five and a half million people just on the edge of their seat waiting to know how they can prevent know, the flu. Because ninety percent are going to get the flu of some description, with an urty upper yep. respiratory tract infection, mm -hmm. or a nasal clogged up, or dribbly, oh, or runny, or cough, or it's whatever. It's a bit festy, isn't it? There are <laughs> thousands of different viruses which can cause the flu. The serious ones, H1N1, those nasty mm -hmm. ones, as well as the ordinary ones, which are not quite so serious. Yep. Would you believe it? In published in the British Medical Journal the other day, which is also the, the British bastion of uh, information, which I get every week, so we yep. keep up to date with all the stuff to tell you folk out there. They have discovered an old tablet, which has been around for mm -hmm. about 20 years, taken regularly, will reduce greatly by about 90% the risk of catching any sort of uh, viral confection, which is called the flu or a cold or coriza, or whatever you like to call mm -hmm. it. What kind of tablet would do yeah. this? I'm Could intrigued. You now, a few weeks ago, we talked about Professor Barry Marshall, the yeah. guy who found the helicobacter germ in the stomach, which yeah. causes, ulcers. and this is treated, which causes uh, ulcers, which can lead yeah. to cancer. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. Now, would you believe it? They've now been using that long enough to discover that if you're on one of these things called a proton pump inhibitor, a little tablet each yeah. day, and there are millions around the world who take these regularly, the risk of getting a viral infection is reduced by about 90%. 90%? Now, this is unbelievable. It's been around for 30 years, this thing. It's wow. on the NHS in Australia and probably in most the Western world, Western areas, yeah. and uh, cheap. 
And just by taking that, it's harmless. It just reduces the acid production mm -hmm. and it also helps to kill the helicobacter germ. Mm -hmm. And they've got this new use which they found. Wow. So how long would you have to be on it, Doc, do you think, before it would take effect? Well, now, people who are, have heartburn and um, run the risk of ulcers, they take these things, uh, they can take it for years. You can take them for the rest of your days. Mm -hmm. And I would say that people looking on, there will be millions out there who take a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor, various brands, Nexium, Losec, a lot of other brands, mm -hmm. that uh, they're on them in any case. So their risk of any sort of viral infection in the yeah. winter months or the cold Older months is greatly reduced. Now, how's that? Wow. Old drugs, new uses. We yeah. find these sort of things happening yeah, from time to time. So I thought that was a beauty. That is a beauty. Talk about killing two birds with one stone. Now, also, if you want to, um, you have the flu injection too. That's a double measure. And uh, America now suggests that all, all, all the whole population should yeah. have the flu injection once a week, usually in late autumn. So there you are. Take your pick. All right. There you go. Some good alternatives there, Doc. Stay with us, we'll be right back after the break. Bye, love you all. <laughs> Every week, It Is Written is available to millions of free-to-air viewers throughout Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea and the Pacific. It Is Written's Gary Kent regularly takes viewers to the far corners of the globe to report on new evidence and discoveries that confirm the Bible and Christian beliefs. It Is Written also provides medical care to remote Pacific Island communities. Join Gary Kent each week for It Is Written. See television guides in the It Is Written website for broadcast times. It Is Written with Gary Kent. It really is television that changes lives. Hello, welcome back and it's a pleasure to welcome to the studio and to introduce to you Dr. Richard Amram Elofa from mm -hmm. the, let me get this right uh, Richard, the World Jewish Adventist Friendship Centre. Exactly, y yeah. Is that right? Now you're yeah. based in Paris, is that right? I am based in Paris. I was based uh, 15 years in Israel mm -hmm. because I was a president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church there. Mm -hmm. But two years ago I uh, got this position full time time, mm -hmm. then I decided to go back to Paris where my family is. Mm -hmm. So uh, over the years, um, Dr. Alofa, um, there's been a lot of tension you yeah. know, between Christians and, and Jews, um, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of history behind that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sadly, on, on the Christian side, you know, yeah. pogroms and, and all sorts of persecution. Mm -hmm. um, but you're now involved in a Jewish Adventist friendship center, yeah. what, what does that involve? What bridges are you trying to build? Um, because when we look at uh, the Bible, uh, we, we see that um, uh, at the end of the time, we have to bring back the Jews to Jesus. Right. And uh, when we look at uh, the history, we discover that uh, in the first century, the Jews believed easily to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands of Jews. In fact, mm -hmm. well, the Jesus, first... what? Jesus was a Jew. His yeah, disciples Jesus were was a Jew, It was a Jewish course. movement. Yeah, yeah, and it was a Jewish movement. All the first believers were Jews. Mm -hmm. yes. But in fact, uh, with uh, the history and what you have mentioned from this conflict between Christian and Jews, mm -hmm. uh, we discover now the biggest obstacle between Jews and Jesus is the church. Mm. And that's why we have to work first in reconciliation mm -hmm. between the church and Israel if we want to, to help the Jews to believe again in Jesus. Mm. So what does that involve? What does reconciliation involve exactly? Reconciliation uh, means in fact uh, to, to comfort mm -hmm. the people of Israel, mm -hmm. to be on their side, mm -hmm. to be ready to, to support them and to help them when they have difficult time. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, we, we, I preach in every church where I go, uh, this uh, verse from Isaiah 40 verse 1, comfort, comfort my people, mm -hmm. says your God. Now, Seventh-day Adventists in particular, I mean, often Seventh-day Adventists are accused of being a bit Jewish yeah. be because of the Seventh-day Sabbath, yeah. Um, yeah. Bas basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there other uh, crossovers between Adventist um, doctrine and practice and Jewish doctrine and practice that make it easier for an Adventist to connect yeah, with the Jews? In fact, uh, we have to remember that all what we receive as Christian mm. came from the Jewish people. We have the same God. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. We have the same Bible. Mm. We have the same hope in uh, the resurrection and the, the kingdom of God and the Messiah. We have mm. the same hope in the Messiah. Mm. And in fact, the Adventists have been uh, a little bit further because uh, they have accepted the full Bible mm. completely with the Old Testament, the True. Hebrew Bible. Mm. Then, for example, we have the same lifestyle together with the Jews. We oh, in terms of clean and unclean clean meats? Clean and unclean okay. meats and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that in some parts of the world, Dr. Alofa, there are actually what you might call Christian synagogues. We call that uh, today Jewish Adventist congregation. Okay. We are very careful to call that uh, synagogue because in fact the word synagogue is used by the Jewish people. Okay. And we don't want to be uh, to, to replace Israel. Sure. You, we don't want to be in this replacement theology. Okay. But in some Jewish Adventist congregations, yeah. if, if I've got the terminology right, yeah. you you use, um, or some of those congregations use a very Jewish form of worship, e even though they are worshiping Jesus the Messiah, y yeah. Yeshua. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because in fact, uh, we would like in our uh, congregation to respect the mm -hmm. Jewish identity. We use, for example, the shell of prayer. Mm -hmm. I bring one of the shell of prayer here with me okay. uh, to, to show you what is that. And um, you, you have certainly seen Jews oh, okay. uh, with this uh, shell of prayer. This is the prayer shawl. Yeah. And uh, what does this say um, on, on here? Th that is a blessing which say, uh, praise are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, uh -huh. who commanded us to uh, bear the tzitzit, and the tzitzit are the tassels. Oh, the tassels. Okay. Yeah, because in fact, uh, what is written in the Bible in Numbers chapter 15, mm -hmm. from the verse 30, it is not written to have a prayer shawl. Mm -hmm. It is just say, we must have tassel on our The four clothes, corners on of the four. Yeah. yeah, and because the Jews in the time of the Bible had that all the time mm -hmm. on their clothes, on their jacket, okay. because a tailor made that for them. Mm -hmm. They were Jewish tailor, okay. but today not anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Jews say to follow the commandment of God, we have at least to have the tassels for the prayer time. Mm. Is, is there a risk, uh, Dr. Elofa, that when you involve these sorts of um, parts of worship that it becomes a legalistic thing? What is the meaning of legalistic, mm. to be legalistic? That is the main point. Mm -hmm. Is to be legalistic is uh, to follow the law of God. Is uh, that is not the meaning of legalist. No. The legalist are people who say, uh, I keep the Sabbath in order to be saved. Yeah. Salvation through the law. Mm -hmm. salvation through the work mm -hmm. and that is legalism mm -hmm. but when we have this shell of prayer mm -hmm. uh, prayer shell it is not in fact uh, to be saved okay. that, that has nothing to do with salvation mm -hmm. and because we want the Jews to be comfortable mm. in our worship then we say to them, you can have the prayer shawl if you want. Okay. You can have the small hat, which is uh, the kippah on oh, your head yes. if you want. Yes. But nobody is obliged to have mm -hmm. the kippah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Uh, everyone is free. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that a congregation is going to enforce no, on its members? No, absolutely not. Wow. Absolutely okay. not. What, one thing I find really exciting, Dr. Elofa, is that in New Zealand, in, in Wellington, there is right now one of these Jewish Adventist congregations. Yes, yes. So we, right here in, in, our, you know, in our part of the world. Yeah, we have started this Jewish Adventist congregation about uh, one year ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I came back uh, this year too for this uh, uh, ministry, and especially because they would like to start now new Jewish mm -hmm. Adventist congregation in Rotorua mm -hmm. on, in Auckland. Mm -hmm. on the and, and what about Sydney? There are a lot of Jewish people here in Sydney. Yeah, now I am in uh, Sydney and mm -hmm. in Australia because uh, I think we have to start a Jewish Adventist congregation in Sydney and mm -hmm. in Melbourne. And I have already few names mm. of people who are interested to start this ministry. Wow, well, that's good to hear. But we have to know that this ministry doesn't start like that. Of course. Uh, it takes time. Like I say, reconciliation, building yeah. relationships, yeah. friendship. Yeah, and we have to train our members to have this friendship. Mm. Well, just, just before we finish, just quickly, yeah. you, you come yourself from a Jewish family uh, yeah. born in Morocco. Yeah. What was the thing that 
tipped the balance for you to, for you to accept Jesus? Oh, in fact, it was uh, when I met some people who were Seventh-day Adventists mm -hmm. and I was very surprised <clears throat> because I didn't know any Christian mm. who was keeping the Sabbath and uh, mm. has uh, some similarities like that with the Jews. Mm -hmm. And then I started to read a little bit more the Bible mm -hmm. and the prophecy and I discovered by myself that uh, Yeshua could be the Messiah mm -hmm. described in the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. The power of those prophecies was important yeah, for you. Yeah, very well, important, yes. Now, th there might be some of our, our viewers, Dr. Elofa, who are interested in knowing more about the, uh, the World uh, Jewish Adventist Friendship Center. Have you got a website people can visit? Yes, of course, Jewish mm -hmm. Adventist, one word, JewishAdventist.org. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, that's easy. Yeah, and I uh, produce a newsletter every week. Okay. People can just subscribe. You can sign up for that. Is in English? English, French, Russian, and, Russian. and Dutch. And Dutch, there you okay, go, four, four languages. languages. So yeah, that website's right there on your screen. Check that out. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Richard Alofa, for, for your time uh, Thank you today. for your invitation. Uh, not a problem. And uh, may God continue to, to bless your ministry. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. We'll be back straight after the break. Signs of the Times, a magazine for a world on the brink. And this month in Signs, can you really face death with good cheer? How to make and keep friends in your adulthood. PayPal and Tesla founder Elon Musk on his amazing world. Tracing the footsteps of Jesus in Israel's far north. All in this month's Signs of the Times. Subscribe to Signs today and change your life. For more than 40 years, Grammy-nominated artist and pastor Wintley Phipps has used his voice and music ministry to inspire people from all walks of life. Wintley has been a regular guest with Bill and Gloria Gaither and the Billy Graham Crusades, and he has sung for every US president since Jimmy Carter. After 19 years, he returns to Australia for two very special performances in Melbourne and Sydney, joined by songbirds Anna Weatherup, Emily Rex and Marlita Fong. Bookings are essential and seating limited, so go to saltermusic.com. That's Salter with a P to reserve your tickets today. Hi, welcome back. Well, Danielle, something that uh, Richard actually told me yeah. while while he was in the studio while we we're off air yeah. is that you know during the recent you know bombings between Gaza and Israel, yeah, yeah. his his parents are still there. They live just wow. over the Gaza border. So, yeah, he he has he been a bit a bit nervous about concerned. that. Concerned, yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, he was. certainly quite volatile, wasn't it? It was, but it's it's over now. So I guess you know his mind's at, at rest. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Well, thank you for joining us again for another episode of In Focus. If you'd like to catch more episodes, join us at our website, record.net.au. It's all there. Thanks for your time. We'll see you next week. God bless.